Welcome back for another round of Rugby League World Cup previews. We're a week out and we're going to be looking at Australia here. So the favourites of the tournament. Miles, do you think they're rightful favourites? Mate, I think it's going to be close between them and New Zealand. Uh, to be honest, this this Australian team's a little bit more ex inexperienced than I would have thought. But uh, clearly, you you think that they're going all the way, mate, uh, with that jersey on there. <laughs> yeah, I think they're they're the team to beat. Um, I'm looking at this squad here, or the 17 in particular, and they're just amazing across the board. Like, I had some questions about some of the selections, and we'll go into that later mm -hmm. but just looking at the forward pack to start just just look through that so tino and carrigan at prop both really in form really quality young players what i love though is the fact that you've got reuben cotter coming off the bench so he comes on in the middle to complement isaiah yo as well that middle forward rotation is amazing and then you throw regan campbell gillard into that who could start and play 60 minutes if you wanted to it's just an amazing middle forward rotation. And I thought that was that was my question about them going into this tournament. Um, mm -hmm. In that, you know, a lot of origin level front rowers are going to play for Samoa, Tonga, you know, other nations there, where they're going to have the cattle to match it up in the forwards, especially in that middle third. And I think the answer is yes here. Yeah, look, I, I can't really argue with you there. Um, this forward pack is extremely mobile. You know, when, when you got guys like you know, Cam Murray and Patrick Carrigan playing, who normally play 13 for their uh, their clubs, being able to swap them to, you know, off the edge or in the middle for a short stint in the front row. Carrigan is is great as far as offloads go. Murray is such a good ball player, but you can't go past Isaiah Yo, can you? I mean, he led that Penrith team to another premiership. So, yeah, they're, they're just... They're so tough. What I think this forward pack does lack is a bit of size um, in saying that. Uh, I do think that there are bigger teams out there that could bash them around a little bit. But um, yeah, I think for me, there's a couple of selections as well that I think could have been made a bit better. And um, But we'll we'll get into that, won't we? Um, I love, and it's just to echo your point, uh, as a Cowboys fan, um, I do love Ruben Cotter. Uh, I'm so happy to see him get picked. But, you know, as I said before we started this video, there's there's a fair few debutants, but you'd be surprised at the kind of guys who haven't played for Australia yet, um, considering how good they've been for a number of years now. You know, guys like Carrigan, uh, Crichton, Angus Crichton. Crichton's a surprising uh, one. Carrigan's pretty Isaiah young. Isaiah Yo hasn't doing it played for, for Australia as well. Um, there are just guys in this team that haven't played at the international level. Even Nathan Cleary. How good's Nathan Cleary been for the last four years? Never played for Australia. So uh, I think I'm glad that they chose Regan Campbell Gillard as well. He could have easily gone and played for Fiji, and we'll get into their team in a moment. But um, yeah, they're a scary team on paper, um, and hard not to go past them as favourites. But uh, I never like to pick the favourite. So. <laughs> gets me into trouble with uh, with gambling. So <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy to root, off, root for them. I mean, I've got my Aussie jersey on now. I got this one all signed up at the 2013 World Cup. Um, I think they're going to get it done again. I mean, just look at this. Imagine if we had Tom Trojevich in this team. Like, imagine if you had Latrell and Turbo as your two centers. I remember the old team had. Uh, a few guys like that at Jared Hayne back in the day too. You know, just, I just think even now though, the edges are so good. Um, mm. And like you look at the hooker rotation too. So Ben Hunt starts the game, Harry Grant comes on. Relentless hookers, relentless. They could both finish the game with over 10 runs each. And it's just, mm. again, it, like these big forward packs you're talking about, they're not going to be able to handle that. They won't be able to yeah. handle Harry huh. Grant and Ben Hunt's speed out of dummy half, just creativity. Like they're just going to pound through the middle, these boys. And then, yeah, you know, not the biggest pack, but my God, every single one of them can offload. Most of them can mm. throw a nice short ball. Most of them can throw it out the back. Isaiah Yo is another number six out there as well. Like, I just think the deficiency in terms of like raw size and run it straight size is more than made up for by all the other strengths. Yeah, I, I will say this though. Uh, I know I, you love the hooker rotation, I do too. I think they're both fantastic players. Ben Hunt, 
weird that he doesn't he doesn't play hooker for his for his normal club, but every um, chance that they get to throw him in at international or or for the Maroons, he's always playing hooker um, and seems to do a pretty damn good job. So uh, I will say though, if one of them goes down, they're looking to play 80 minutes. Um, if one of those two, Hunt or Grant, is injured, they don't have another hooker in the squad. So that could damage them a bit and they'll be praying that I think one of them doesn't go down. But yeah, it's a great one-two punch to have Ben Hunt start and then Harry Grant to come off the bench. It's just, it's just like, what what a team's going to do. Uh, I, I, I struggle to come up with superlatives to describe the amount of... Um, the amount of praise, although it is very Queensland centric, and we're uh, you know quite proud Blues fans and quite disappointed Blues fans that maybe Appy Corusau or or even Damien Cook didn't get the nod there, um, at least in the squad. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. The thing with Hunt uh, though is he covers a few yeah. spots. Like I, I like Hunt in the squad. Um, yeah. One that I'm going to point out a negative. Actually, before I go into the, the selection negative, look, crap, they're going to be for the 2022 World Cup winning team. So, cheers to that. Now, one downside, para jersey in the back there, recently signed by Sean Lane. Best back rower in the comp this year. Best yeah. edge, edge back rower. Let's, like, let's make it less debatable. Easily the best edge back rower in the comp this year. Just incredible alongside Dylan Brown. I get that he's not the perfect edge back rower, but I'd have him on that bench over Liam Martin so quickly and yeah. like look Liam Martin good player but what does Liam Martin bring that those starters don't you know Angus Crichton can play 80 Cam Murray can play 80 Isaiah Yo can go to the edge uh, they've got enough there what you want if you want what you want if your bench is a bit of X factor and we were talking about some of the other teams like the Samoa team for example where they've got pure X factor coming off the bench it's a big plus it's Australia team Harry Grant pure X factor Ruben Cotter pure X factor but if they had someone like Sean Lane there and they were down by six or 12 with 20 minutes to go, yep. Sean Lane, get him on the field. Get him on the field. Get him throwing offloads to Campbell Graham, Latrell Mitchell. See what he can do. Imagine that. Imagine you got Cleary straightening up. you got Cam Munster there. You've got Sean Lane and you've got Latrell. That is not... It's scary. It's not It's not human. It's horrific. Like it's, yeah. it's a war crime. It's, it's terrible. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Whereas Liam Martin comes in and like he's, he's good. He's, he's a better defender. Than Lane, he's probably a little tougher in terms of playing in the middle than Lane, but I, I would pick Lane. I mean, do you have any other selections that you'd be moving, even just within the 17 and sort of moving positions around? I do have one that I would have loved to be in the 17, and looking at the 17, it's really hard, but this guy, uh, Nico Hines, uh, I mean, I one. find it so hard that he left him out of the squad. I mean, I, I know guys like Jack Whiten have proved it at, you know, New South Wales level and potentially at an international level before, but how do you not give the Dally M medalist a go? He was unbelievable this season. Like, lights out good and can play a number of positions. He's a big body, defends well. When he when he was announced as the seven for the Sharks, I think everyone went, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, no, he's not going to do that. And he killed it. He killed everyone. I, I just, I find it so harsh that he's left him out of the side. And the other guy I'll talk about is Dylan Edwards. Uh, I think deserved to get into that squad. Um, at oh, least. mate, mate, you can't have both though. Like you can't be saying yeah. two additional fullbacks because look, Hines is there. They've got Cherry Evans as the backup. There's no, there's and they've no got Ben Hunt as a backup at no. half. Like you got to, you got to pick one. Are you saying Hines your backup fullback? I, I Look, Dylan, I would have had him in. I would have yeah. had him in over Cherry Evans. Hines over Cherry Evans. Call. But, but it depends how much you value that experience with so many debutants, right? Like Cherry Evans has been around the team. I don't know. Like part of me wants to say that he'd help. He'd help sort of steady the ship and keep things level. But then I look at Manly this year, and he hasn't yeah. done that for Manly. So not blaming him for Manly's self capitulation, by the way, but. Yeah. He's, he's leading that team so yeah I, I don't mind that actually like Hines do you want Hines alongside Munster if Cleary gets injured do you think that works he used to play with Munster so like I don't mind that he'd have a connection there but I think 
what I will say about Cherry, in defense of Cherry Evans, even though we possibly said that Hines would have been a better pick, but in defense of Cherry Evans, I think he tends to play much better when there are better players around him. And with Manly this year, yes, they've got a bunch of really good players, but his go-to player is, as everyone knows, Tom Trebojevic. So not having him, Cherry Evans feels like he's got to do everything, whereas in this Australian team, he wouldn't have to do that much. So I, I just, I think in defence of Cherry Evans, there, there's a little bit of defence there, but I just think leading your team to seven straight losses to finish the season was not a good look. Um, and in my opinion, it makes it makes you extremely, extremely viable to being cut from the Australian side. But he's a Queenslander and that's what Meninga loves, Queenslanders. So, um, yeah, Mal does have a bit of that. Bit of that bias, I, I do agree <laughs> with that. Um, yeah, look, look, it's the this is the problem with Australia. You can't really go wrong with a lot of these selections, and mm -hmm. you end up with your coach making choices that are either safe or sort of high upside moves. Yeah, but I think like I've criticised Australia a lot in previous years for making boring selections and just getting blown off the park by teams who were more fired up for the game. This team doesn't scream that to me. You know, there's mm -hmm. enough explosive players there. Josh had a car getting in when he didn't get in for the Blues. Like, we've picked the upside play there. And with this team, all you need from your wingers is good support play and finishing ability and a bit of speed. <laughs> he's yeah, he's don't, literally don't, don't the start best. Me about, don't start me about him not getting selected for New South Wales. I mean, it's just a joke. You, you don't want Dan Tupo in this team? <laughs> Hell no. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I just... I, I, I totally agree with you. Adokar needs to be in there just purely. It's exactly the same reason why Samoa would pick a guy like Hamaso. Like, he's just so fast. Like, according to Gus Gould, fastest man on the planet. <laughs> it's, he just goes. Like, and it's great to watch. And I think with a, with a team like Australia, he's going to be finishing those off. Playing out, I'd play him outside of the trail. Um, oh yeah. They're, they're, oh yeah. They're great together. Yeah. Um, the other one I think is Campbell Graham getting in there. I think, yeah, like I think as a body of work, he's done enough to at least get uh, a nod in terms of playing and starting for Australia. Again, a guy who didn't play State of Origin this year, um, but was probably pretty close to it. However. The guy who would be who's going to be outside him is Valentine Holmes, and he is the guy who won Dalian Center of the Year this year alongside Joey Manu. So, I mean, are you are we happy to play a guy who won the Dalian position? Are we going to play him out of position? So I'll tell you, he's great. Point blank, point blank, mate. If we had Brian Toe for Australia, uh, then Val Holmes would be the center. I'm pretty certain of that because the way he played at center this year, like just the way he was able to run onto balls, sort of run those crash lines, like there's really tough lines. I didn't think yeah. Val was a tough player until I watched him this year. And he he's just, he's ramped that up to another level with his defense, with his line running. He's always at the flash. He's always been explosive. He could, he's always been able to kick a 40 meter field goal, but he became yeah. a really tough center this year. And he goes back to the wing and he's not gonna let anyone down. Like he's good under the high ball. He finishes just as well as anyone. Nice. He's fast, but like right. you're wasting that development that he's shown and like that development that made him Dalian center of the year was that toughness and you've got Campbell Graham there and he's a pretty good defender you know, pretty good player probably not going to set Val up as much as Val would set up you know Talungi if he was in the team for yeah. example but do you think Talungi is better than Campbell Graham is that other question probably not. so yeah. yeah so on net team you're probably picking Campbell Graham but on upside at center you're probably picking Val it's you can't really go wrong and we're going to see a combo of both that's the thing like yeah. as this tournament goes on someone will pick up a niggling injury they'll get rested here and there we're going to see like, especially against the lower tier nations all these guys getting a run yeah definitely i think tao Lungi, i mean it could be the new north queensland bias in me to say that you know tao Lungi was actually the only other aside from ado car is the only other genuine winger that got selected in the squad so he picked two wingers um, I mean, it's not hard to replace wingers, but um, I just think with Campbell Graham, is there another level that he can go to? Like, I've seen the defence, I've seen the, 
you know, marking up on his opposite number, he shuts them down. I just, I just think that there's, he's not as flashy as everyone else, and I get that. But is it is it good enough to be one of the two best centres in the nation? For me, no. Like, I, I'd, I'd have Jack White in over him. That's how much I, I, I don't think that Campbell Graham is the answer. But this goes back yeah, to what we're talking about. Squad. Or Burton. Burton's yeah. in the squad too. I'd pick Burton over him like that. Yeah. But like what we were talking about with the France team, right? We were talking about a team that didn't have many stars, but has played together. So 20 or 24 players um, from Toulouse or Catalans. When you look at an Australia team, it's really tempting to pick a video game super team. Yeah. And it won't work. It doesn't work. If you have <laughs> alphas across the team, it doesn't work, right? Campbell Graham could be the guy that just plays his role. And he's the guy where Munster knows where he is. You know, Munster's used to playing with like Olam and, you know, some other sort of outside backs that weren't as flashy in Melbourne. At Okara as well. But, you know, Cleary as well, he knows where he is. You know, the edge back rollers when they're throwing offloads, they know exactly where Campbell Graham's going to be. Is it yeah. is it better to have Campbell Graham? Like I'd have Campbell Graham over like a Katoni Stags if Katoni was fit, for example. Um, yeah. You know, I'd have Campbell Graham over a lot of guys just because he's going to play that role. It's kind of like that Clay Thompson effect when you're picking an All Star mm-hmm. team in the NBA. Um, he's just going to play a job. I think that might be why Liam Martin was picked over Sean Lane as well. But like, yeah, Val Holmes on the wing, Ado Car on the wing. They're going to play their jobs. Latrell's a freak. Latrell's going to do Latrell stuff. Latrell's good enough to justify it. Yeah. But yeah, that's where, that's where I'm thinking maybe it's just good to have that reliable Campbell Graham because there's enough star power everywhere else on the team that they're thinking we're going to blow through the middle of teams. We're going to have such good playmakers. All he's going to have to do is yeah. run nice lines, catch and pass to his winger and play good defense. Like, can you so see that angle? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I agree with you. I think that um, you know, with Campbell Graham, you don't need that flashiness. But I think we've taken... We know we've we've taken enough risks in other positions anyway to, um, I guess, get a bit of cover for. As we said, Burton. I think picking Nana is is so great because I, I I love that kid so much. Like he's nineteen and he's killing it. Dude's a um, freak. Yeah. Uh, if he gets, on, he'll get on. He'll get on. Some games. I'd love him to get on. Yeah, he absolutely. he could be the top try scorer for the tournament if he gets on <laughs> enough games. Like <laughs> I, I could see him scoring six or seven tries. In some of yeah, these sort scary. of more exhibition-y kind of games. Oh, he's a scary dude. But you just don't... You don't know what he's going to do. But half the time, when he gets the ball, he's got a great right foot step, really good in the air. Um, I think he needs to work on potentially um, building his frame a little bit more to be a bit more damaging ball running-wise. He's 19. Draw in for right. more defenders. I was pretty lanky um, at 19 too, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that he's lanky, he's he's well built, but yeah, no, he'll probably yeah. bulk up a bit. Just on Burton as well, I think Burton's value to this team, so I'm just thinking about it now. I haven't thought about him too much until now. He can do all the Campbell Graham things. Like he can yeah. defend like Campbell Graham, he can run a line like Campbell Graham. Where he was such a surefire good pick for the Blues was that he kind of covered up Luai's weaknesses in the kicking game. So he kind of played six to plug the fact that Luai doesn't really do that. Um, whereas in this team, even Ben Hunt is, is a top tier halfback, you know, top tier kicker. Yeah. Uh, Latrell can help them in that way as well. Like, I don't know, I just think maybe the simplicity is good there. Do you, do you see much sort of squad movement as we go along? Like, do you think this 17 is going to be it for most of it? Or do you think, like, because I've heard Meninga's talking about the fact that the halfback position isn't settled. It's based no. on performance, and he's going to pick Trey Evans or Cleary, depending on performance. Which I hate as an approach. Yeah. Like I, I get that you have to do that, but don't announce to two very, very senior players that your body of work, Cleary, being the best player in the comp for the last year. Yeah, I reckon personally, um, was, isn't enough. And your body of work, Trey Evans, of you know winning Origin for us and, and being excellent for the last ten years, isn't enough. Like just pick one, say they're the halfback, and then make the change if you need to make the change. Exactly, I think. The biggest question for me is who's going to be the goal kicker? <laughs> Just because uh, I want it, I want it to be Val Holmes, but M- Mitchell's in there and Cleary. So awesome! Now, just jumping into fixtures here, it's a bit of a softer pull for Australia. <laughs> you go Fiji just a week from now, five thirty a.m. I'll get up for that one. Uh, you got Scotland, you got Italy. So 
We're going to go into those teams in a second, but I don't think there's any doubt that Australia goes 3-0 and to start this tournament. Yeah, no, it's not particularly interesting for the first phase of the World Cup for Australia. I mean, if one of those teams get a shock win, it would be Oregon. Those fans are going ballistic, but uh, I don't see it happening. Uh, I think they should be a dollar one to make it through to the next round. Dollar one is free money, mate. It's <laughs> cheers to a dollar or ninety nine cents. Like, why, why are you betting on that? You should lose money. Yeah, exactly. You'd be you should be losing money. All right, beauty, mate. Well, we've got uh, look, Mal Meningas, Kangaroos, James Tedesco as the captain, three and zero. Guaranteed money. We'll see how they go later in the tournament. I think they take it out. You've got the Kiwis. Uh, on to the next one now, though. We're going to be jumping across to Fiji. And then we're going to go into Scotland and Italy in a combined video after that. So we'll see you soon. Thank you. <laughs>